There's a famous thought experiment called Mary's Room, and it's about a scientist called Mary who spent her whole life in a black and white room doing nothing but studying color. So she's never actually experienced color herself, but she knows all about the different wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. She knows about the human eye, how it works, how visual inputs are processed by the brain. So she thinks she knows everything there is to know about color. Now suppose we showed her the color red for the very first time. Has she learned something new about color, now having had the experience of color herself? If you think the answer is yes, as I do, then that means that you also think that the experience of color isn't simply reducible to the objective scientific descriptions of the brain and the nervous system. There's something more to it. Now the real conundrum about it is the question of how this experience could possibly rise out of non-sentient matter. After all, we're made up of the same matter that other non-sentient matter is made up of. Astrophysicists famously say that we're nothing but stardust, which, strictly physically speaking, is of course true. But why is it that some matter, like your brain for instance, produces consciousness? This is what philosophers call the hard problem of consciousness. The reason why it's so hard is because it seems like even in principle one couldn't explain how this consciousness comes to be. It is, however, at least in principle possible that future scientists may be able to explain all the mechanisms and functions of the human brain, explaining complex emotions like envy, anger and lust by boiling it down to the electrical signals between the relevant neurons, thereby making our brains completely predictable, completely deterministic, just like a machine, just like a clock for instance. The interesting thing is that no matter how detailed this description, this still never tells us what we actually experience subjectively, or if there's actually anything going on subjectively. You could, for instance, imagine a person designed in a laboratory, a perfect human being, indistinguishable from any other. The person would laugh and cry and uh, say ouch when pricked by a needle and even claim to feel pain but never actually have any conscious experience. They would be completely dead inside. What the philosophers call a philosophical zombie. That means that the facts of experience are not entailed and can never be entailed by a description of the physical facts. The fact of consciousness is and remains the fundamental mystery of our existence.